Now I will spend money on a lot of things. Seriously check my Amazon history, it's probably too much. One thing I will not spend all my hard earned money on is a $450 road shower. I'm sure it's nice, I'm sure it works great, but it's $450 and I don't wanna spend that much. So in this video, we're going to make the ultimate road shower using some four inch PVC pipe. Don't know how much it's gonna cost, we'll put that somewhere at the end of the video. Well, let's jump right into it. Everything we're gonna be using is right here. We have four inch PVC pipe, two caps, a clean out plug, T, uh, W, Y, E, a Y for my application, another clean out plug, tape measure, a air inlet, a pressure relief valve adjustable, PVC cement, some water weld to seal these holes, a rain pal, rain tap, basically faucet in, and some paint. First thing before I make any cuts is I wanna get a quick dry run. I know my total length has to be right around six feet, which will give me about four gallons, cause you get about two thirds of a gallon per foot of this four inch pipe. So this is going to be one end with this clean out plug adapter on this. It's going to be this right here. So we'll have probably about a four or five inch cut. This will be here as our fill valve. And here is essentially the roughed draft. This is going to sit on the roof rack. This is going to aim down uh, for gravity fed along with easier access. This is a clean out plug. This is the fill plug. This is lined up so that this aims down and this aims straight up. All the way down here, six feet later, we have our final cut piece. And then we'll put this cap on the end just like that and we will have a functional pipe. And there we have it, six feet long, cap, pipe, fill, valve, and uh, access plug and drain port. Final cut we need to make is a little four inch piece to go from here to stick out to put our cap on. Let's get that cut real quick. Our four inch piece cut and our cap goes on. Let's put all this together with glue and then we'll put our fittings on. Now squeeze these together. Quarter turn. And now you leave it. Now that everything is put together except for our end pieces, we're gonna go ahead and sand this down and paint it so that that can dry while we figure out our fittings here. And the reason we sand everything is so our paint has a good surface to adhere to. Y'all ready for this professional paint setup? We're gonna put our air chuck and our pressure relief valve on our top piece. Disclaimer, you will need an air compressor for this install, so I have one behind my tail light. So let me know in the comment section below if you wanna see a video on how I put one in there. Uh, if not, just use a Schrader valve and a pump. That way we don't have any issues of, you know, trying to fill this up and water's pouring out or anything like that. It's a little more inconvenient, but should be okay, shouldn't be an issue.
Once that in there, we'll hit that with the water weld, and uh, hopefully that will hold. I'm just going to thread this in. Last, we have this piece, 7 eighths. So we're just going to go right through, and hopefully that will be the end of it. One inch socket on that bad boy. Wear gloves, knead putty with fingers, press firmly on the surface. We're not quite ready to test it yet, but we are ready to go ahead and put the final pieces on as it cures. Got another, about another 45 minutes before this JB Weld fully cures before we test it. Don't wanna mess anything up by just being a little too excited. Full disclosure, few days later, I went on a trip to see the solar eclipse and I needed this road shower done and it leaked. It leaked like Boeing made it or something. So I took some like bathroom caulk, put it all around all the seams, hoping that would do it and it didn't. Uh, pressurized, blew some holes in it. May have worked if I left it longer, but it didn't. DWV pipe is not meant for pressure, um, but this is schedule 40, which can handle up to 140 PSI or 100 plus PSI, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We're going up to 10 and that's it. So we're going to take some of this JB water weld, put it along every seam that we have, and we'll hopefully seal this thing up so we can pressurize it to our 10 PSI with our little pressure gauge here. Let's get that done and we'll give it a test. One joint completely done. We have six more to do. So let's uh, speed through that. About one and a half tubes of JB water weld later, we are good to go. So we're gonna give this about an hour to cure and uh, then we will test how it holds water. I'm expecting some leakage out of the threading of this coupler and this one and that's completely fine that's just to be expected but i'm hoping all of our water slash air pressure is mostly going to be coming out of this faucet so we'll give it an hour and we'll pressure test it now fill up with water to pressure test so you can see leaks and also water doesn't go boom like air does so we are expecting leaks out of here and down here but it's more for everywhere else, so we'll get this tightened down. So we got air coming out of all around here. After our pressure test, it looks like we do have some minor leakage out of certain spots. We have somewhere in here, there is a minor, minor, minor leak. So it just oozed out a little bit, not much at all. Our caulked end here leaking some leak in here we'll turn it over and investigate and that's it we're dry everywhere else so not too shabby put some more water weld on redo it re-pressure test and uh, then we'll paint it all up with the JB weld dry our only leaks are coming from the clean out plugs under pressure this one especially right around 10 psi air is just pissing out so we are good to go. We're gonna go ahead and paint these real quick. And 
and then we'll throw it on the truck. Now mounting it to your roof rack is entirely up to you because every situation is unique. I own a 3D printer, which means I basically look for problems to be solved buy a 3D printer. And if you don't have a 3D printer, just go buy some U-bolts, uh, get some kayak foam, stuff it in between here, and run it alongside the rails just like this. So I 3D printed these brackets that mount to my roof rack and then just clamp down. Now these are 3D printed out of ASA, so they're UV resistant, they're tough, they're functional application parts. I did use these mounts to take this solar shower up to go see the solar eclipse, about 1,200 miles round trip, uh, and everything held up fine. So this is my solution and it keeps it locked in and it's quiet uh, due to rubber gasketing that I plan for in the process. Now I will be keeping an eye on these mounts just to make sure over time that I don't have any issues. Mounted to the roof rack via my 3D printed mounts, shakes the entire topper uh, doesn't slide left and right and even part of the design is locked in here between the two couplers So even theoretically it really couldn't go left or right or front and back without snapping everything, but yeah it, It's held up fine. I've had no issues with it So I've been using this setup now for the past month and it works fine. You actually don't even really need to pressurize it to get some water out. Gravity will do enough for you to get you some good flow as long as you're aiming down. But it's not the ultimate road shower. How do we make it the ultimate road shower? Let me show you. I'm gonna take my universal coupler and this 90 degree elbow, that way I can get it moving towards the front of the bed and not going up in the air. Take this 90 degree elbow, connect it to my airline, which is a male uh, Flexilla hose. The reason we're using a universal coupler so that we can disconnect it and have a free flowing out for the water. Then we take a garden hose with this female to female adapter, attach it to our spigot, and then go turn the garden hose on, open our valve, and it's going to fill up our road shower where we don't even have to undo the PVC at the top. This will fill up the PVC road shower because of water pressure, and it will shoot out the top like a beautiful geyser, possibly 20 feet in the air. Moving it in front of the bed, down between the bed and the cab, I'm gonna route this along the frame away from the exhaust, tying it away. Make sure it's not near any moving or hot components. Next, I'm gonna put in a T-fitting here to split the air from my air compressor to the air chuck and add another line so I can go directly to the road shower. With that T-coupling in, I'm now going to connect a air valve. That way I can cut air to the road shower if I need to fill up tires so I'm not wasting air where it shouldn't be going. I 3D printed this little mount here to go on the back so I can easily access this valve. Now let's test it out. All I should need to do here now is attach my hose, turn on my air compressor, open. Look at that. That's air pressure, baby. That's over 10 PSI. This concludes our Ultimate Road Shower video. I'll put the price of how much I spent right here, 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 somewhere, because I honestly have no clue. It's been, a, it's been a process. But let me know what you think, if you have any upgrades or uh, any ideas. It's about four gallons. Uh, I can shoot about 20 feet. So plenty. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.